Here we are on part 11. In this part of the tutorial we're going to route wires into actual traces. So what I mean by that is these yellow things, these yellow wires, they are going to look like traces. Traces that you would see on a PCB. So without further ado, go over to your left where your toolbar is and I'm pointing at the route button. Uh, looks like two points and a trace going between them if you couldn't see it on this tutorial. So I'm going to click that and to route your wire, your trace, click at a starting point and then click at the, the ending point. I'm going to go start with R2 left side click over there and then just it'll kind of snap to it for you automatically and just click in the center of pin 1 on J1 there you are now if you look up at the um, top just above the command line these are your options for the type of types of traces you want to create we are on the 90 degree um, which was okay for the trace that we just did but most of the traces you want to do you're going to use the 45 degree angle and they call it wire bend so I'm going to change to that next I'm going to zoom in a little now I'm on the right side of R2 I'm going to click there I clicked once and if you notice it gave me the the move symbol that's due to two wires going to the same place. So, perfectly fine. Just click again. So now you've created the trace, and it looks like our bend is going the wrong way. That happens quite often. So, if you don't want it to look like this, just hit escape. And instead of going from R2 to pin 2 on the J1, we're going to go from pin 2 to J1 on J1 to R2. So click the center here and drag it up and click on R2. There you go. Let's tie R1 and R2 together. Done. And then finish up with R1 to pin 3. So these are your actual traces, your signal traces. Now from what we remember, if you click on your schematic button, also known as the board button, it's going to take you to our schematic. Let me zoom in a little. On our J1 we've labeled ground, we've labeled pin 1 ground, pin 2 output, and 3 VCC power. And by convention, power and ground usually have thicker traces because they need to carry more current. And you can change that by using the info button. So I'll click the info button. This will be ground. And about a third of the way down, there's a parameter called width. You can change that to 24 from size 16 to 24. Say OK. Now you notice the thickness is a little bigger. And that's what you want for power. Or actually, this is ground. Another way of changing it, this is a new button. If you go over to where you see the wrench, that is the change button. If you click that, it's going to give you a list of things that you can change. And if you recall, what we just changed was called width. And so if you scroll down or put your cursor over width over on your right, it'll give you the sizes that you can change to. So select 24, and then click on the trace going from R1 to pin 3. And we've now just changed the power trace from size 16, from width 16 to width 24. Now you're done. Done with traces. In the next tutorial, tutorial I will sort of clean up the look 
of this. We don't want our silk screens hanging off of the board. These um, names and values are a little small to see, and we might want to label the rest of J1 so it's obvious which one's ground, output, and power. And if we want to, we could also give our board a name, make it all pretty. That's it for this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next one.